ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله عز وجل وخير الهد هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار عباد الله إسلام is a holistic religion and this beautiful religion covers all aspects of life. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِنْ مَنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Say, indeed, say, there is no one better in speech than someone who says, or he, who calls to Allah, and does righteous deeds and proclaims, I am among the Muslims. And why is that? Because many people may call to Islam, but they're not sincere. Many people may do righteous deeds, but they may not show it to people. Those who have righteous deeds and sincerity must proclaim, must announce, must express their identity. And this is what we have a problem in. We live in a Kafir country, but we failed miserably to announce our identity. They say you have to blend in, you have to merge, you have to compromise, you have to let go. This is not what Islam is all about. Islam is a religion that gives its followers dignity, honor. Islam is a religion that part of the essential fundamentals of it is to be unique, not to simulate other beliefs and other religions. Rather, you have to go against them as part of your own belief. Don't we say in the Quran, or in the Fatiha, in our prayers, اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Which one? صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ Guide us to the straight path. Which path? The path of those upon whom you have bestowed favor, not of those who have earned your anger, or of those who are astray. We don't want to be like them. We want a separate path than the Jews and the Christians. That's why you find that the Muslim is always unique, has his own identity wherever he is. You can recognize him. If he's in Alaska or in Siberia or the jungles of Africa, you can tell that this brother is a Muslim. Whether he's wearing Arab clothes, he's wearing a pair of jeans, he's wearing a three-piece suit, you could tell. He is a Muslim because he's a servant of Allah and he follows Allah's commands in every single step he makes. The Prophet ﷺ, when he came, he did not come 
to make a revolution. He says, alayhi salatu wasalam, in the authentic hadith, I was merely sent to perfect good character. Meaning, good character was present before he came. But he came to perfect it, to make it complete. And this is why Islam acknowledged some of the characteristics that the disbelievers and the idol worshippers had because they were good. Islam approved courage, generosity, truthfulness, honesty, fulfilling your promises. All of these were approved in Islam. And the status and the position of Islam when it infiltrates societies is very crystal clear. We're not here to clash with the community or to face them head on. Rather, sovereignty is to Islam. Islam prevails. Islam rules and it is not ruled. Islam dominates, it is not dominated. But we don't clash. This is our belief. This is our religion. Islam has scorned and criticized nations before us who gave their back to Islam and decided to follow the norms of their forefathers. Allah says in the Quran, and similarly, we did not send before you, O Muhammad, any warner into a city except that its affluent said, indeed, we found our fathers upon a religion and we are in their footsteps following. Islam came to control and to govern how things should be done in the shade of worshipping Allah alone, Azza wa Jal. And this is what we all claim. We did not come here today except to express our Tawheed to Allah, our obedience to Allah, being servants to Allah. And when Allah tells us, put your forehead on the floor, we say, Sami'na wa ata'na. We comply and we obey. We don't have any objections because we are Muslims. We are servants of Allah Azza wa Jal. So we need to submit our will to Allah. We need to surrender. It's not something that you can apply your logic and say, hmm, I'll choose this and I'll skip that. This is not Islam. Islam is to adhere. Islam is not to use, not to use your logic. Be careful. If you lose your logic with Quran or with the Sunnah, you'll end up in hellfire. This is exactly what Satan did. Allah told him, prostrate to Adam. He said, whoa, this is not logical. I'm better than him. You created me from fire and created Adam from clay. It doesn't make any sense. I refrain. What did Allah do? Sentence him to hellfire for a gazillion years? For eternity. And this is the fate of each and every one of us. May Allah forbid. If we decided to follow our own logic and say, mm, no, I don't like this. This doesn't make any sense. Why would Allah do this? Why would uh, uh, the Prophet order me to do this? Who are you to object? You're a Muslim. You follow. And you are honored to be a Muslim and to be proud of your identity. Part of the governance of Islam is clearly described in the hadith where the Prophet والسلام, first came to Medina. So he found the locals celebrating two days. It's their festivals. They've been celebrating for hundreds of years. So the Prophet said, والسلام, what are you guys doing? So they said, these are two days events we celebrate every single year for centuries. So the Prophet said, stop this. Allah has substituted you with better than them. Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitr. These are our two only celebrations in the year, which means 
as Muslims, I'm proud not to celebrate Christmas. I'm proud not to celebrate Thanksgiving or Halloween or New Year's Eve or Valentine Day as so many Muslims unfortunately do. And you get presents of, who's this from? I secret Valentine, MashaAllah, Tawarakallah. Do you see La ilaha illallah? Sure, sure. But this doesn't prevent me from sending you some chocolates and red roses, it does. If you believe in Islam, you know that this is haram. Don't belittle it. Just because you're in the melting pot, everybody around me is doing it. So what the heck? Might as well, no. You have to have your identity. وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ I am among the Muslims. Likewise, what we wear has to fall under the governance of Islam. Bear witness. When Islam came to Mecca, the Prophet didn't tell the companions, take off your clothes and wear like weird uh, uh, attire. No. They still wore what they're used to because this is what they wear. But Islam came to govern. So uh, Islam puts guidelines for what is halal and what is haram. For women, they must not cover their bodies. They must not wear transparent clothes or clothes that is tight and exposes their body structure and, 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 and bones and curves. They must not wear something that is solely known to be for disbelievers. And they must not as well wear anything that draws attention because women are supposed to conceal their beauty. And they say only for their husbands and mahrams, for your eyes only. Not for those out in the street to look. They don't wear colorful abayas and with uh, uh, adornments and flashy stuff. Likewise, men, they're not allowed to wear silk, pure silk. Muslims, it's haram for male, males to wear silk, to wear gold, to wear something that exposes their thighs, as in the case of shorts, or to wear something that exceeds their ankles and covers it, because this is a major sin that would put them in fire. And they must not look like disbelievers. So is wearing a pair of jeans and a t-shirt imitating the disbelievers? No. All, all Muslims wear suits and shirts and uh, uh, trousers and the likes. There's, there's nothing wrong in that. But the moment you start to be confused to those who meet you, mm, should I say salamu alaikum or not? Why? Well, the brother is not wearing um, Islamic attire in the sense that he's wearing a necklace, he's wearing earrings, he's doing this, he's doing that. This is imitating the disbelievers and this is when you lose your identity. I seek forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal for myself and for you so ask Allah for forgiveness and this is one of the times where the dua is answered when the Imam sits between the two khutbah you have debts ask you have illnesses ask you have a problem in your marriage ask it's less than 15 seconds but Allah Azza wa Jal responds to you insha'Allah wallahu a'lam Allahumma khfir li wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه أجمعين. Islam came with a perfect religion because it came from Allah عز وجل who created us and knows what is best for us. 
Yes. And this is why Islam prohibited demonic and satanic habits that include changing the creation of Allah. So it is pro prohibited in Islam to pluck the eyebrows, both for men and women, as the Prophet cursed whoever does this. It is prohibited to have tattoos on your flesh. And I see a lot of the Muslims, unfortunately, who live in these countries, think that it's cool to have some ink on your skin, not knowing that they are cursed for this. But when they see celebrities, when they see athletes, and when they see those whom they look up to doing this, this is when you lose yourself, you lose your identity, you lose your pride and honor when you imitate someone like those. Also, Islam prohibits connecting the hair with extensions, and it's a major sin. Islam honors hair. The Prophet told us, whoever has hair should honor it. Doing what? Offering it coffee? Of course not. Honoring the hair is to calm it down, to put some um, oil or the like so it would not be um, um, not looking good, to calm it and to have it tidy and clean. And this is why in Islam it is prohibited to have qaza. And qaza is to leave some part of the hair on your head and shave others. So this kind of haircut is haram in Islam. But unfortunately, a lot of the Muslims think it's cool. And with the weather here, everything you do is cool. Also, it is prohibited in Islam to show your respect in a way that conflicts with your tawheed. It is not permissible to bow to people or to prostrate to people. It is not permissible to kiss people's feet as in some cultures. It is not permissible to squat as in some African cultures when you meet elderly. It's not permissible for any man, even an elder person, to place his hand on people's heads as a form of blessing and whether they're women or men. This is not from Islam. The Prophet والسلام, shows us the importance of the man in his wife's life by saying, if I were to order someone to prostrate to someone, I would have ordered the wife to prostrate to her husband due to his huge status and importance in her life. Among the cultural things that we Arabs have and we're rejecting and refusing to fight it is free mixing, especially in weddings. And I believe that this is prevalent also here. You have men and women mixing in weddings. The groom comes in front of all the women and the bride comes wearing her haram dress, no hijab, exposing every hour possible. And she sits in front of non-mahram men, clicking photos, enjoying what they're seeing. And the poor cow next to her is just smiling and, and proud. Yeah, this is my wife. Ya khifir Allah. Don't you feel like that you're not a man anymore? Where is your jealousy? Let alone where is your Islam? Such cultural things and customs expose us big time. Because this indicates if I'm a true Muslim following the Quran or the Sunnah or otherwise. And we have habits, customs that we call part of our honor and dignity, which has nothing related to honor and dignity. In some Arab countries, we have what is known as honor killing. So if your sister, if your mother, if your daughter 
allegedly is dating someone or talking to someone, you feel obliged to kill her, thinking that this is part of protecting your honor, not knowing that this is part of throwing you in hell big time. This is a major sin. It has nothing to do with honor. But this is what culture does to you when you don't have Islam in your heart. Some cultures do this horrendous act, shameful act on the night of the wedding when they give to be known for this in front of everyone. Ya yeah, have some shame, have some honor, have some dignity. And this happens in so many cultures. So many parents insist not to give their daughters except to their nephews. You're not selling and buying, Akhi. This is marriage. If she doesn't have any chemistry with the man proposing, even if, her, if he was her cousin, you have no right enforcing her. Even if you are her father, you have no right enforcing her. You're the one who's getting married, get married to him. <laughs> she is the one who's going to live with him 24 7 under the same roof. So fear Allah Azza wa Jal and abide by Islam and its teachings. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, but know by your Lord they will not truly believe until they make you, O Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam, until they make you judge concerning that over which they dispute among themselves and then find within themselves no discomfort from what you have judged and submit in full willing submission. You will never believe until you implement this ayah in your life and accept Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam to be your judge and to be your mentor and to be your leader who would be the only one to lead you to Jannah to Naim. So, are you going to follow Sharia? Ah? Or are you going to follow your whims and desires, your customs and traditions, your clan's aspirations? This is what you have to decide, and the choice is yours. Allahumma ghafir lana warhamna. Wa'afina wa'afu anna. Wa tawallana bi ri'ayatika wa la tahrimna. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم أصلح أحوال المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم دمر أعداء هذا الدين اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان يا رب العالمين اللهم انصرهم في فلسطين وفي غزة اللهم كن لهم ولا تكن عليهم اللهم اجمع شملهم وسدد رميهم واجمع قلوبهم على قلب رجل واحد يا عزيز يا حكيم وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد 